China has once again drawn global attention after a short video showed a giant stealth drone taking off from a test area in Xinjiang. In the footage, the unmanned platform, unofficially identified as GJX, appears to climb steadily with a flying wing configuration, low acoustic signature, and a sleek aerodynamic profile consistent with efforts to minimize radar return. The clip, recorded on 19 October 2025, sparked rapid analysis. This was not merely a prototype trial, but a sign that Beijing may be moving toward operational strategic unmanned stealth platforms. Open reporting places the flight near the Milan test complex, a site repeatedly associated with high-risk avionics and UAV experiments in recent years. Imagery circulating online shows a cranked kite plan form and a tailless hull, design features typically employed to reduce radar cross-section and suppress rear aspect infrared signature. Reported wingspan estimates put the aircraft in the rough range of 42 meters, a size uncommon for stealth UAVs, and one that, if confirmed, suggests a platform built for long endurance and significant payload capacity. The flying wing layout offers several practical advantages. Broad planforms can be shaped to scatter radar returns, and the absence of vertical tails removes prominent reflection points exploited by seeker radars. The cranked kite geometry also enables efficient lift distribution across speeds, improving stability during long-duration crews and reducing fuel consumption. When combined with composite materials, radar-absorbent coatings, and thermal management for engines, such a design can reconcile range, endurance, and low observability into a single package. Analysts assessing open information suggest GJX could be intended for multiple strategic roles, high-end intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, standoff precision strike, and mission support such as electronic attack and target designation. In an integrated scenario, a large stealth UAV could precede a strike package, mapping enemy sensors, degrading networks, and creating corridors for missiles or crewed aircraft to follow. Its size also implies space for wide aperture sensors, high-resolution synthetic aperture radar, or long-range data links capable of feeding targeting data to distant launch platforms. This development fits into a broader trajectory. Over the past decade, China has accelerated UAV capability from tactical systems to higher-end platforms progressing from widely exported medium-altitude ISR drones to experimental high-speed and low-observable designs. The emergence of GJX appears to add a strategic layer to that ecosystem, an unmanned asset designed to operate at operational and strategic distances rather than only in tactical roles. Why the timing now? The answer lies partly in intensifying competition across the Indo-Pacific. Against layered allied air and maritime defenses, crewed platforms face escalating risks during initial penetration missions. A large unmanned system allows a phased approach. An uncrewed asset probes and maps the adversary's dispositions first, draws responses, and tests tactics without risking aircrew. If configured for weapons carriage, such a platform can shift the initial risk from crewed to uncrewed systems altering how adversaries must prioritize defenses. Regionally, the appearance of a platform like GJX signals that China intends to extend its reach farther seaward and forward. Over maritime approaches such as the Philippine Sea and waters around Taiwan, a stealthy long-endurance UAV could meaningfully expand ISR coverage, feed targeting data to standoff weapons, and compress the decision cycle for kinetic operations. Combined with space-based and surface sensors, it could change the tempo of air-sea operations in the Western Pacific. For potential opponents, GJX forces a reassessment of air defense architectures. Conventional active radars may need augmentation with passive, multi-static sensors, denser ESM networks, and cross-domain data fusion to detect and track low observable targets at operational ranges. The result is a new technological race multi-band complementary radars, AI-driven detection algorithms, adaptive electronic warfare, and anti-UAV defenses that operate beyond purely tactical envelopes. Domestically, a large stealth UAV can bridge gaps while crewed strategic bombers remain in long development cycles. Building a stealthy crewed bomber requires extended timelines for airframe design, 
materials, avionics integration, and operational validation. Fielding a large unmanned platform more quickly offers flexibility. It can assume early penetration and ISR roles while manned systems are finalized for deterrence and follow-on strike missions. What might hide inside GJX's shadowed wing? The internal volume suggests room for large fuel tanks, mission-grade sensors, or internal weapon bays that preserve low observability. If the architecture is modular, the platform could function as an aerial node, carrying relay payloads, coordinating swarms of smaller UAVs, or orchestrating multi-vector attacks in concert with anti-ship missiles and long-range strike assets. While specifics remain speculative, size and configuration provide tangible clues that cannot be ignored. From an operational perspective, a recorded first flight indicates initial integration among propulsion, digital flight controls, and aerodynamic stability has passed basic thresholds. Subsequent tests will typically expand the flight envelope, evaluating speed, altitude, endurance, mission sensors, and emergency procedures, followed by phased integration of mission payloads and signature measurements across frequencies. This staged approach may be lengthy, but the existence of a large flying prototype signals substantial program investment across industry and test infrastructure. Observers place GJX within a wider pattern. Unmanned platforms are evolving from tactical tools into strategic instruments. Across competing militaries, capability accumulation is focusing on seeing, surviving, and striking from greater distances with ever lower detectability. In that calculus, an asset that can extend ISR and deliver standoff effects compels adversaries to respond at the strategic level rather than merely on tactical terms. Integration will determine real value. If GJX operates alongside tankers, airborne early warning, and modern crewed fighters, it can push operational reach into areas that previously required unacceptable risk. Network resilience will be decisive. Robust, jam-resistant data links, secure encryption, and survivable command structures will decide whether the platform is a game-changer or merely another prototype. For states guarding narrow choke points and critical sea lanes, the implication is urgent. Defense postures designed for crewed aircraft must be adapted for long-endurance, low-observable unmanned threats. That adaptation includes cross-domain detection upgrades, real-time allied data sharing, and revised interception doctrines crafted for targets with low radar cross-sections that do not follow conventional transit routes. Beyond systems and doctrine, the first flight also served as a political signal. Without formal announcements, the released imagery allowed observers to infer size, silhouette, and intent, forcing competitors to allocate attention and resources across multiple contingencies, rather than a single predictable threat. In signaling terms, ambiguity can be as potent as transparency. It compels rivals to hedge against a range of possibilities. Many details still require confirmation. Exact wingspan, engine arrangement, and materials have not been officially disclosed. Nevertheless, a recorded flight, independent analysis, and observable trends in China's low observable UAV development are sufficient to conclude that GJX is more than a short-lived laboratory exercise. Ultimately, the strategic significance of GJX will be defined by how it is used, not only by how it was built. If used as a stealthy sensor and an extended striking arm, it could reshape planning for air-sea engagements, accelerate decision cycles, and reallocate risk across platforms. If it remains merely symbolic, its impact will fade with the news cycles. But if it becomes the lead element of an integrated unmanned combat architecture, a brief clip from Xinjiang may mark the opening chapter of a longer shift in modern air power. A short video, a large aircraft, and many questions. Yet one thing is clear. Platforms like GJX shift the advantage from the most visible force to the most network and perceptive. In modern war, victory is no longer decided by who hides best, but who sees first.